So I'm trying to make a pair of sandals, and sandals with cork soles. What? Um, and because a well-known brand of cork-soled sandals doesn't tell you how to do it on their website for some reason, um, I have to do some experimentation to figure out what is the proper uh, mixture of cork uh, to liquid latex. So um, the sandals I'm trying to make uh, from bottom to top are a rubber sole and then a layer of jute twine, so like burlap, and then cork and latex, which is the actual footbed, and then another layer of jute twine uh, or burlap, and then um, the actual, the, what your foot will touch the footbed, which is suede. Um, never mind the little boy over here who's playing, um, which is suede. Um, and then they'll have the straps that go over uh, made of leather. So right now what I'm trying to do is experimentally figure out how much cork I should mix with how much liquid latex to form the best sort of sole that I can. I've taken corks, cut them in half, cut them in fourths, and then sliced those up as small as I could, and then I ran them through a blender, basically, until they're about the size and consistency of grape nuts, but they're much springier. So now what I want to do is take these crumbs and mix them with liquid latex. I'm going to pop these into a muffin tin and press them and let them dry, and then when they're done, I can have some samples of what the footbed will be like so I can figure out which is the best consistency. Like I said, I don't know how much liquid latex I should be adding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out 10 grams of cork, which is actually quite a lot of cork because it doesn't weigh anything, it floats. So it's about a, a quarter cup um, for those of you playing along at home, but 10 grams. I'm doing 10 grams because it's a nice round number. So then when I add five grams of liquid latex, um, I'll call that 50%. Okay, so here's 10 grams, and I'm gonna pop this into my muffin tin, but first I want to lay out, put in a sliced up coffee filter so it's not gonna stick and will come out pretty easy afterwards. Now I'm opening up my liquid latex, and this is available online. It's uh, used in making costumes and prosthetic uh, things. It's a natural product. It's just liquid, it's just latex and water. So I did see on the website of this famous brand uh, that the dough that gets baked into the um, cork board or cork footbed looks like a cookie dough or something like that. All right, that five grams will not do. Let's try 10 grams. There we go, oh, there's 11 grams. Let's see how that does. So it looks like a, a fairly wet uh, cookie or bread dough is the consistency I'm aiming for. So I put this in here as firmly as I reasonably can. All right, so there's one. So let's try it again with uh, Let's try 15 grams. Let's try 20 grams. And we'll do 25. So, so I just did 25, now I need to do 30. So it'll be All right, it's the next day, so these have dried out, I hope. So I'm gonna slice into them one by one and see what the inside looks like. So here's the 10% uh, or 100%, so just as much 10 grams latex with 10 grams cork. That's pretty good, actually, surprisingly good. This is 150%, so 15 grams latex with 10 grams cork, 
20. Twenty-five grams and two hundred fifty percent by weight, and these are getting much rubberier. Like I can clearly tell that the majority of the structure here is is rubber, with just a little bit of cork kind of floating in the rubber. So um, twenty-five twenty-five grams or two hundred fifty percent is too, far too high, and you can see this flapping back and forth here. This is just giant ball of latex. <sighs> Oh yeah, that's just latex with some cork in it. So, I think 15% is reasonable, or uh, 15 grams is reasonable. I was kind of, from the outward feel, I thought 20 or 200% would be the, the winner, but it's actually really spongy. I don't know if I'd want that under my foot. Deforms, yeah, I think, golly. If I compress this a little more, I think I could go with 150%. So you see how 150% bounces back? With only 100%, it deforms and stays deformed a lot more and tears more easily. If I start to tear it a little bit, it comes apart. Whereas the 15 or the 150%. There's a lot more there, so I think 150% is my winner. Okay, first I cut out um, and drew the depths of uh, each location on the foot. This is going to be the press that goes in and, and pushes the form into the top of the, of the sandal. Um, and then I sanded, I cut out I, with a router um, some flat areas where they should be flat and some depths and then I sanded between those areas to make this form of a shoe. Uh, and you see here, that still has to be cut out to make the, the toe grip. I'll do that with a chisel. I've got my form and I did a little bit of sealant in there so that the latex doesn't stick to it. It'll probably still stick to it because, you know, my luck. So now, sand these sandals have a layer of leather and then jute twine 
and then cork, and then another layer of jute twine. So what I want is, I'm gonna build these backwards and then put these forms into here, but they're a little tight. So what I have to do is, put the leather on the way it goes, and I gotta make sure that the leather touches um, all of the, the rim there. Cut your leather and your jute a little bigger than you think you need it, because if you cut it small, it's a little harder to get it all in there evenly. I'm running into that problem. So I get this as sandwiched as even and nice as I think I can. Put it there. Start to push it in. I'm gonna check and make sure that the, ah, see how my jute isn't covering all the way? I got a little to one side. So I'll try and line that up again. Slide that over. It's kind of funny, I lived in Germany, uh, actually not too far from one of the major factories where Birkenstocks were made, but I had no idea. Otherwise I would have gone. So that's pretty good, I got a little bit missing there. Can try one more time, doesn't cost anything to try again. Other than a little bit of my sanity. I'm trying this over and over. And when I get it nice and lined up, I'm going to go ahead and tap this in. It, I want it to be pretty tight. So, mission accomplished. And I want to tap this down until it's just flat. Eh, not ideal. See how my jute didn't cover? That's why you want to make your jute bigger, bigger than it should be. And there I've got the excess jute that should be right there. Ugh, shoot, I don't think I have enough extra. Let's try, see if I can get the other one. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So there are some spots where it's concave, like here on the arch support. So I'm actually going to use vice grips and pull the leather a bit tight in that area to try and pull that leather down, just so that there's not a when I push the cork in here, it's not fighting against a lump or anything. And then there's a concave part there behind the, behind the toe for the toe to grip so the sandal doesn't go flying. So I'm just going to push down and make sure that there's plenty of slack. And now I'm going to take this inside and push the cork onto it. Okay, so now I've got my form ready to go. All I need to do is mix up my cork at a ratio of two to one. That means for every gram of cork, I'm doing two grams of liquid latex. I need to put it into the form, put the, um, the jute twine, the base layer on there, put the top on and squish it. And to squish it, not only am I gonna use wing nuts here on the bolts, I'm gonna put it in my cider press and really press the bejesus out of this thing. So, let's get going. Let's see how many grams I've got here. I'm putting in more grams than I expect I need. I'd rather have it flow out and have extra rather than have voids or too little Yep, just, just over four ounces, not even 4.1. So, uh, 114 grams, and now I'm gonna add 228 grams once I get this added. And here are my bottoms, marked with B. All right, making the well in the center. 228 grams, here we come. It's kind of like paint, because paint has latex in it, so this is a little bit of a paint consistency. Two hundred 
15, 17, 18, 19. 28. Nope, oh, 29. I went one gram over. So sue me. All right. Now we're going to mix it around. So I get a dough like consistency. Oh. There's ammonia in this and it stinks. So in the videos I've seen, they use metal forms on, at the, the BBB factory, at the factory where they make these sandals. I'm using wood, um, which will probably absorb water. It'll probably dry out faster, which is good. All right. Now I've got this mixed. Now it's time to put it into the form. Push it in, really get it in every crevice. Then I think I've got it pretty well pressed into most places. I am going to kind of mound it up in the middle so that when I press it down it'll push out and in and fill in all those crevices hopefully I don't end up with platform sandals with too much in there I'm hoping it'll squish out if it doesn't belong in there that is my hope I mean it's been a couple minutes it's still plenty workable plenty, plenty pliable all right I think I have a pretty even amount on both of these. So now, I'll take the bottoms, set them on. And now I set this plate on. There we go. Now we'll just make use of the old cider press. So first I'll press the whole thing together and then I'll move on to press each individual foot. And each time I'll, as I tighten this, I will tighten up the Tighten up the screws. I have no idea how much pressure this is or how much pressure one needs. Again, it's all an experiment, but I've gone down a good quarter inch already. I anticipate that's a fair amount of pressure, but spread out over two feet. So now, once I get these tightened up, I'm going to let the pressure up, and then I will do this over each individual foot. Okay, so one website, the official website, says that the soles are baked at 100 degrees Celsius for a few minutes. Um, and then I found a newspaper or a, a magazine article that said they went inside the factory and on that tour, they said they were baked at 80 degrees for 10 minutes, 80 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, and then left to, left to cool at around 70 degrees for 24 to 48 hours. So, right now I have my oven on warm which is probably over, um, which is probably over uh, 100 degrees, but I'm not using a metal form, I'm using a wooden form, so the heat's gonna penetrate a lot slower and, and not as, as, as well. 
So a little hotter for me is probably okay. So I'm just gonna pop them in uh, my oven on the lowest setting and I'm just gonna turn it off and then I'll just come back tomorrow morning. And we'll just see how that works out. Oven off, door shut. Fingers crossed. So on second thought, I think I will turn this on for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna set a timer and then I'll just turn it off and then I'll let it sit. I just wanna make sure it does get up to temp so that uh, latex really vulcanizes inside. All right, now it's time for sandal assembly. But first I gotta cut up this mower tire to get the tread off the bottom. Um, now mower tires often have a much thicker tread. This one's pretty worn out. I use a mower tire instead of a car tire because they're not steel belted. Um, I learned this living in Guatemala and Mexico. If you make sandals out of um, tires as the tread, don't use car tires because those little wires, the steel belting in there will work through and stab you in your foot. Whereas a mower tire is just rubber and um, it's got a layer of, of, of fabric belting in there which won't bother you at all. There we go. That's plenty of tread for lots of sandals. Now for the next steps, there's a lot of videos on YouTube from cobblers who know a heck of a lot more than I do about attaching soles and uh, uppers. So if you just um, go onto YouTube and look for resoling Birkenstocks or refurbishing Birkenstocks, you can definitely find videos with more information than I have. But what I'm using is a contact cement. This is Pliobond 25LV industrial contact cement. It's not, you don't have to use that. You can use whatever you want. Um, but that's what I found at my hardware store. So that's what I'm using. So what I've got are my, my soles, which came out, they're, they're okay. I'm happy with the footbed. I had to build up the back here because the, when it came out of the form, it tore. Um, so I had to kind of rebuild that, but most of that's gonna be under the leather. And this is deer hide um, that I tanned a couple years ago. Um, and then I dyed it with, with walnut, uh, with black walnut like you saw. So basically I'm gonna use contact cement to attach this leather upper to the sole and then I'll have my little sandals. I still have to cut a little bit but I wanna wait until I put them on my foot to see how much I need to cut. This might be a good time to plug my other video about making wooden shoes. This is a wooden clog, um, a sabot, or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're interested in uh, seeing how I made these, and I've been wearing these all summer, uh, check that out. But this is a video about making uh, Birkenstock style cork soled sandals, so let's keep doing that. So now comes the stinky part. I want to put contact cement everywhere that's going to get connected. And this stuff stinks. If you watch the cobbler's videos, they've got these giant glue pots 
She looked pretty stinky and gnarly. This is actually not that porous now. Uh, it's got uh, latex, right? All infused through this jute twine. It looks pretty cool, actually. Um, I think if I did this again, I wouldn't go so hardcore on a foot-shaped form. Instead, I would make a sheet of cork, um, latex-infused cork, um, and I would push them, um, and I would just make a big rectangular sheet of it, and then I would cut my foot shape out of it. Now, is that as good as a Birkenstock? Absolutely not. It's not f formed to your foot. It's not got that nice shape, but <laughs> it's a lot more manageable at home. So next year, when I replace these soles, that's probably what I'm going to try and do. But this year, I got this foot formed. Or maybe I would just push my, my little foot forms into a rectangular square of it rather than making a shoe-shaped rectangular form. You saw how much trouble I had getting it out of there. So, so there's no big rush because um, you're supposed to put on a layer and let it dry. Nice thick layer on these more porous sides. And it takes not much time once I do the contact for these to be cemented, but it takes a week for the bond to be fully set up, so I'm not going to wear them right away. Now I'm going to do the same thing to these guys. So it's been an interesting process. Um, I didn't expect my results to come out as nice as a, as a real Birkenstock, and they won't be. <laughs> um, I think I can already guess that my conclusion is, uh, if you want Birkenstocks, you buy them. Uh, you can make the, the cork and latex material is actually pretty cool. I really, I really like working with it. Um, it's got a nice smell and a nice um, consistency to it. It's just a, a pleasant, a pleasant uh, thing to work with. This stuff, not so much. Um, the forming is a pain. And uh, unless you have the right things to put the pressure on, you're not going to get as, as durable as a footbed, I don't think, um, as I was able to make here. Um, I mean, we'll see how durable it is over the next year. But, um, yeah, it's been a... A nice experience and I appreciate the, uh, when I buy my next pair of Birkenstocks, I will definitely appreciate the, the price a little more. I've done a lot of research into this. I actually have a playlist um, on my YouTube page here um, and you can look at some of the different videos that I watched of disassembling Birkenstocks, resoling Birkenstocks, and then whatever useful information I could get from the Birkenstock company itself. Unfortunately, the most useful video was a documentary made by ProSieben Galileo, which is a German uh, documentary, not documentary, it's like a, a, a TV magazine program um, that I, I, I used to live in Germany, so I speak German, and they had this great video, and they went inside the Birkenstock factory, and it was great and super useful, and it was online, like, six months ago and now it's gone. It's been deleted, which sucks because uh, it had it showed them put it, assembling and putting together Birkenstocks. And now it's gone. So um, I had to remember what I could remember. Yeah, it's been a it's been a neat experience. I learned a lot about Birkenstocks. Um, and I think that cork latex mix, I think that's a useful uh, a useful mix to know how to make. It seems like it um, I'm going to get some latex gloves here. I'm starting to get a little bit of tackiness on my fingers. And I do not want to bond <laughs> these lowers, these uppers or lowers to my, to my fingers forever. As excited as I am about them, I don't want to wear them as gloves for the rest of the day. So I'm cutting this a little loose because I can always trim it up perfectly once it's glued on. Birkenstocks often wear out on the soles. These will definitely not wear out. These will outlast 
It'll definitely outlast everything else. So I think I will put a second layer on the leather and then try and attach it and cross my fingers that I don't mess it up. <laughs> All right, I decided to get my forms. I'm gonna reuse those to help keep pressure on these things. I don't think I can really fit this in, it's too tight. What I can do is put my shoe back in here and I'll have a lot of nice pressure to push the leather on where it should be. Hopefully without deforming it. It says to keep it under pressure while the glue dries. So I did cut the leather so that there would be less overlapping or as little overlapping as I could figure out on the bottom. Because you don't want little lumps under your feet. If I hadn't cut it, there would be lumps where this folds over and touches, you know, and runs over itself. There's a little bit of overlapping. Probably could have cut it even more aggressively, but. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go find some way to press these a little longer and more in a warmer spot. And then we'll uh, continue on with the rest of it. Okay, so now I've got the uppers glued on and the um, I have put a coat of the contact cement here and here. And so now, so now when it's fully dry, now I'm gonna add another coat um, to it and then stick these on. And I just kinda wanna, um, I just kinda wanna dry place them to make sure that they'll have a good, good coverage everywhere. And I'll be able to just stand on them. So I'll just slide my feet in once I get them where I want them. And I will just stand there uh, for a little while to help set them and then I'll put some weight on them. I've taken the rubber tire and I've stretched it the other way to try and loosen it up a little. Slide my foot right in. I'm not worried about the excess here. I'm gonna cut that off with a sharp knife once it's all dried. And as I do it, I'm standing on one foot to put all my weight <laughs> on the uh, the one I just did. Now I'm gonna put some more um, put some more weight on these things. I've got little bits of wood um, that I can kind of fill up the the space with. And I'm just gonna put some weight on top of them. Okay, so now for weight, what I'm doing. So I'm gonna lift up my table, slide these under, and then I'm gonna slide wedges underneath the toe and the heel. So that there's plenty of pressure on these things. Okay, it's been 24 hours. So now my soles are about as glued as they're gonna be. It'll continue to set up over the next seven days, but most of the most of the strength that's going to be there is there. So now I'm going to take a sharp knife and very carefully cut the excess plastic off or rubber off, leaving hopefully the leather and everything else intact. Cut my finger. Not too bad. Time for a band-aid, I'll be right back.
encore. Now I need to do the strap across the top and they're largely done.